my wife just mentioned to me, you win a game like that, you still not one smile on the sideline. And I'm still just uh, watching this team and trying to just get us to, to be, reach every bit of potential that we can. Um, a great example of that today was uh, Mohammed Ali Abdur Rahman. It, it, you guys wouldn't do this stat, but he had an assist every 36 minutes as a freshman, and he played, played a lot of minutes. It just was something, it wasn't that he was selfish, he just didn't see the floor like uh, we've been trying to develop him to see the floor. So with the 10 assists right now, right, uh, that gives him 30, I think, on the year. So it's one third through, it's one third through the season, I would give him 90. If he continued at that rate, that's like a huge step from going from 20 assists in major minutes, 20 assists in major minutes, I think it was, to 90 assists. So that really helps us um, see what we can do as a team. We've got to see it. I've been seeing a little bit in practice, uh, but it's a refreshing for us to see with all our guys. Our backcourt against a team that trapped us all night long. They never stopped trapping until the last second. Had 15 assists and no turnovers. So uh, that backcourt is developing. They're getting some chemistry. Uh, I called our team a starting seven. When you guys got, you got Duncan and Mark, former starters, are coming off the bench. Um, it, it, we, we, don't, we hopefully don't, don't have too much drop off at that point. Uh, I thought X did some good things today. Ibby did some good things today. John did some good things today. It's not even close to where they're going to be. But uh, we got to let the process take care of the rest of it. Seven you want to off? Coach, there's a stretch there. It seemed like kind of every basket was coming in transition. I know that's been mm -hmm. a point of emphasis. Yeah. But was there something that Maryland Eastern Shore is doing that allowed? No, it, it just, just the whole idea. First of all, you can't run if you don't stop. You just stop. So while they're, they're, they're only a 40% shooting team, and they rely a lot on Andino, and he st I don't know how he made, I think he made three, but how he got to those, he's an incredible shooter. I mean, he, he can play anywhere. He's an incredible shooter. And uh, yeah, we got stops, and we got out and ran. ran. DJ threw an outlet pass that was like Mitch McGarry-like, where he caught it, his feet at the ground, and he put a beautiful touch on, on the ball. So we picked it up that our guards were going back. We, as coaches, here we got all these coaches, and we hadn't picked up that Derek was going backwards if he didn't get the rebound and it was killing our break. So we're, we're, we're doing some drills right now to make sure that we're all busting out and flying. Nobody was busting out at all. Everybody was just looking for Derek. And it was really slowing us now, so that's really helped. Zach? You touched on Muhammad getting a career high in assists. He mentioned that you had a discussion with him in the past week or so about becoming more of a distributor. What's, what was the difference between previous games and what he did today? Well, well, I just think he's got a whole nother level still of, of who he can be as a defender. Right? We challenged him with Andino today. A lot of times we'll take a, a guy like that and put Derek Walton on him. But we wanted to, we wanted to challenge him. Muhammad has another level of play that we're, we've been trying to get out of him. You can see these baby steps every day. Uh, but of seeing the floor of just becoming a better basketball player. And I think we saw uh, maybe a major step today would be the hope. Chris? It looked like you guys were communicating pretty well on defense, especially early, and then what you see there? Well, yeah, I mean, we, with, with, with Copeland, he's really a difficult matchup because they're going to set ball screens for him. Is he going to post Derek up? We were trying to do a couple different things, but, I mean, we're not missing some of the action defensively that we were missing even two weeks ago. And it's, like I said, we watch a lot of film. It's been drilled into them. Some of the times it is the, the, the film that we are watching or, or the, the actions in practice are, you know, they can be punitive sometimes if you don't get it done, right? They're running, they're doing something. I think they're finally realizing it's easier if I just talk. For a bunch of really quiet kids, it's a lot easier to just talk. And uh, you'd be out in front of everything instead of being reactionary. Brandon? Hey, Coach. Uh, towards the end of the first half, when you had both Mo and Mark in foul trouble, it looks like yep. you went with uh, Wilson there in the five. So, what's sort of the plan? To say if one of those or one of those two are yeah, both. it's a good question, the... Brandon. So, uh, you know, we wanted to give John, John hasn't had the type of reps in practice that I didn't think he would withstand it, and I wanted to look at this thing to see where when people are spreading us out late in the game, put one of those seven starters in and just move DJ over to the five man if we need to. And now you can, you can, you can do a lot uh, of things with that. So you may see it again. I'd, I think Mo and Mark are too valuable. Uh, and it, it might tire DJ out if he's got to play that and, and not his natural position. But it, it, it was the best way we could go uh, in that. And the foul, you know, Mo's second foul was, 
was, was one of those fouls that we saw all last year. Just Mo can't do those things. So um, he's learned a good lesson again, and we hope he, we're better from that. Josh? Coach, 9-3 right now. One more game left yeah. until conference play. You guys, you like where you're at right now? You like yeah, I mean, we're, we are, we're at where we're at. I mean, we, the, the Virginia Tech game is in our crawl. That, but as I said, we might have lost to Texas because we would have been so, too full of ourselves after if we played anything close to how we could play. Virginia, credit Virginia Tech now. But that was not a game that we, I mean, we just did not play with any grit in that game. And uh, hopefully it doesn't come back to haunt us, that, that they're going to have a great, great year. Um, but I mean, it is. It, it is. A, I think. I, I think even on a good day, we don't go to South Carolina, UCLA, and win right now. As those are two tough. And you watch uh, who, who South Carolina was at the time with with, with Thornwell, is it? Uh, and with uh, UCLA, they're tough. They're tough outs. But it would be. I, I'd rather be. Uh, you know, have one more win and one less loss right now. But it happened. And I, the only recourse is it will make us better. Andrew? Hey, Coach, 28 assists on 34 made baskets. doesn't seem like the ball is sticking nearly as yeah, much it, as it Yeah, it isn't. It isn't. And once again, they, were, they, were, they played into that, trying to turn us over by trapping a lot. And uh, I just, I think we're, we, our two teams have traditionally been good passing if you do that. The higher the pressure, whatever, we can find guys. So that's why I was really happy the way we saw the extra guy. But I think there, there's, there's just this little chemistry forming right now that I can see it, that Duncan, no, I'm the I'm the hunter coming off the bench, you know, and they were looking for him a little bit better. We got we got to do a better job with all of that, but and looking at the big men as well. Well, as far as him, was that a clerical snafu or something? As far as him starting today? Yeah, I, we, I got to ask how that happened. The, the scout coach puts in the book, and there's never been an issue with that. And somehow Jeff Jeff, uh, who was the scout, uh, checked the wrong box. I don't know. We don't know how it happened. We were surprised as as everybody else, but he does have to start. So I don't think there was any anything Freudian. There was nothing going on there. There was just, he, he must have, you know, Jeff doesn't like wearing glasses, and uh, maybe he's got to wear glasses better. So. Josh. John, uh, just talking to DJ Wilson, he said big time play, the, you know, what stands out is the physicality. And, uh, you know, just looking at the freshmen, yeah. how do you, you know, convey that message to them that this is a different ball game once you step Step in a bit, big oh, play. Yeah, I mean, DJ learned that lesson. Right. You know, when DJ was out for his freshman year, he got, uh, I think it was, I think it was the kid Hart right now at Villanova. I think it was him that went and just pinned that right. stuff and knocked him out of bounds. And they just get, they, 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 they oh, when it's time, okay, weight room time. It has a whole new meaning to him now. And so, uh, where I think that that X has, has been more physical. If he still has a way to go there, and so does John. And John, we're throwing bounce passes to John. I don't know why we're throwing bounce passes to John. Just throw it up to the big fellow. You know, put it in for us. But we, we're, we've got to get used to that. But like John was lifting weights before the game today. You know, that's where we feel we just got to get some some more out of him, get every day. And then tomorrow, those guys will go for, they'll be here for, those young boys will be here for about four hours tomorrow. They're going to get some work in. Uh, they're going to go Thursday, uh, Monday again. They have no days off this week till Saturday. We're working them. John, people say, well, what can you possibly get out of a game like this? And you just listed probably half a dozen yeah. things. It's safe to say that there's never a game you go into where you're not uh, hammering on uh, no. points of emphasis? You know, it was when I talked with the team before the game. As we went through an hour walkthrough of everything that we could see today. If we went through, we watched film for 40 minutes last night. We watched film for 15 minutes today before practice. We watched they, they film, we watched probably 60 minutes of film yesterday. I said, did it appear to any of you guys that, that Coach Beeline or the staff, you know, thought this one was going to be easy, right? We're going to we approach that game just like if if we had a great great team coming here into into Christ with the exact same approach, and we get better. Our shoot around, our walk through makes us better, even though we're just walk because it's that one more time that Xavier or Johnny or Ibby see something or Mo see something and they say, okay, now I know what that guy's been talking about all year long. It's just that one more time in their learning curve. Got time for a couple more, Jordan. Coach, you said that um, you treat it like a great team's coming in, mm -hmm. but a lot of us kind of expect you to be blowing these teams out. Mm -hmm. How um, does it affect the, the players mentally? when they come away with such a big margin for a win compared to if they were yeah, they, they, squeaking you, you have to be out. You have to be careful of that. You have to be careful of that. But, uh, um, you know, they, um, 
they went, they went up to Colorado State and lost by 12, and it was a fairly close game. They lost to George Washington by four. George Washington is pretty good. So we, we approach it all the time, but no, they, they can be full of themselves. If you came to our practice the day after a win, you would realize that we, do, we celebrate the win, but there is no backing off in the way that we're, we're going to practice. Because really, we got we to beat really good teams, right, to be in the NCAA tournament again. we got to beat really good teams. So there's a long way to go before we can beat really good teams.